Hello and welcome to Dover, where I've been invited to travel on board P&O's new ferry, the Pioneer. It's claimed to cut carbon emissions by 40% and it is the world's largest hybrid double-ended ferry. Now P&O is not everybody's favourite ferry company and some of you might justifiably be asking why I'm here today. I'm here because I like to feature on this channel ways to try and reduce the environmental impact of our touring and I would like to show you around this newsworthy vessel. I'd like to make it very clear I am not receiving any compensation whatsoever from P&O in return for making this video and my presence here today is no reflection of my personal feelings towards P&O's industrial relations or its business practices. So with that out of the way let's get on board and have a look at this exciting new vessel. In this video we'll be looking at the car decks, the passenger accommodation, the commercial driver's accommodation and we'll look at the bridge and the engine room to find out what makes this ship so special. The first steel for the P&O Pioneer was cut in October 2020 and the vessel is now ready to enter service a mere two and a half years later. She can carry 1,500 passengers, her gross tonnage is 47,394 tonnes and she is registered in Limassol flying under the flag of Cyprus. Here we are driving up to the upper lorry deck, deck 5. There are two lorry decks and a tourist deck above on deck 7. You can see the approach ramps here to deck 7 on either side and these have been designed to be wider, straighter and shallower than those on earlier ships to allow for easy loading even with A-class motorhomes and vehicles towing caravans. As this is a pre-service press trip we're parking on deck 5 today and we'll take a look at deck 7 in a moment. The two lorry decks boast 2,800 metres of lanes and the tourist traffic deck 800 metres of lanes making for a total of 3,600 metres of vehicle space. As you can see, the vehicle decks are bright and airy. Now let's take a look at deck 7 with its 3.6 metre height limit where cars, caravans and motorhomes will normally be parked and I get quite a lovely surprise. Here we are on car deck 7, which is where the caravans and motorhomes will come. And look, 22 kilowatt AC charger. 10 of those and 32 kilowatt DC charger with a CCS connection. That's locked in, that's CCS. So uh, if you're Chadamo, I'm afraid it's Chadano. I'll get my coat. This is incredible. Do bear in mind that the chargers have not yet been commissioned and P&O has not yet decided if they will be free of charge or if they will be payable. And of course they might change the specifications and numbers during the commissioning process. But this is great to see nonetheless. Heading up into the passenger spaces now and the accommodation is arranged over two decks, deck 8 and deck 9. Starting on the lower of the two, deck 8, and we were asked not to film the duty-free shop which takes up the entire Dover end of the vessel as it was not looking at its best while it was being stocked up. But I can tell you, it is huge. As you can see, the ship is filled with light and is finished in a bright and airy palette. Throughout the entire vessel there are universal sockets at almost every table as well as USB-A sockets so you'll never be short of somewhere to charge your devices and you won't need a plug adapter. At selected tables there are even wireless charging pads. In the middle of deck 8 is the food market which will sell grab and go food such as pizzas, warm pastries and sandwiches. Next to the food market is the kids zone. It's designed to keep the pre-teens amused. 
although that didn't stop two grown men trying to beat each other at air hockey. <laughs> ah, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Moving on, and let's head to the Calais end of Deck 8 and the lounge bar, a pleasant space to be with both indoor and outdoor seating. There's a coffee shop and a bar here too. Now let's head upstairs to deck 9 where there is loads going on. Starting at the Calais end we find the Pet Lounge, p and unique selling point on the Dover Calais crossing. Other ferry operators make you leave your dog in the car. There is a supplement to use the Pet Lounge but that does include tea, coffee and soft drinks. There's even a direct lift up from the car decks. You'll notice that many booths are screened off to allow even the most reactive dogs to relax and there are even some enclosed areas under tables for anxious dogs. I love the carabiners under every table to attach your dog's lead to. Outside, there is a promenade deck and even a potty area with a couple of lamp posts. Suddenly, I noticed that we were underway. This is actually quite surreal. It is so quiet and vibration free. You don't even know you've left the berth. I don't, I'm not using a microphone, I'm using the camera's inbuilt microphone. You're getting all the ambient noise, which is very, very little. It's quite a surreal experience. This is really like the EV of ferries. Before continuing our tour of the passenger and commercial driver's accommodation, let's take a look behind the scenes at the bridge and the engine room and talk about what makes this ferry so very special. If you want to skip the technicalities and continue with the tour, I'll leave the relevant time code in the description below. Here we are in the Calais End Bridge. There are two almost identical bridges on this double-ended ferry because in normal service it does not turn around. Owing to the vessel's length of 230 metres, they could not have had just one bridge in the middle of the ship because of the complex manoeuvring in port. Obviously, only one bridge is operational at any one time. We were shown around by the commissioning master, Captain Simon Moore, and a big thank you to Captain Moore for his warm hospitality. One of my favourite gizmos was the automatic flag raising system. No longer does a member of the deck crew need to change the flag of the port at each visit. They can control the flags from up here on the bridge. Naturally, the P&O Pioneer has enclosed bridge wings for port manoeuvres in bad weather, as well as extra large windows to improve visibility. From the uppermost part of the ship, we travelled down below decks to the engine room, stopping off to admire the goods lift that can accommodate an entire lorry trailer to allow stores and goods to be unloaded on passage without taking up valuable deck space. Chief Engineer Tom Flitch showed us around. The P&O Pioneer has four pivoting propulsion pods called azipods, two at each end. Here we can see one of the four azipods and as you can see, it can rotate 360 degrees, so an azipod both propels and steers the ship, doing away with the need for propellers, rudder control and bow thrusters. The azipods are powered from the 8.8 .8 megawatt hour batteries, with Tom giving us a sense of scale. Currently, these batteries are charged by one of four diesel generators on board, but eventually, the plan is for shore supplies to charge the batteries once connection protocols and harmonisation has been agreed between operators and sufficient power is in place in both Dover and Calais. When charges are in place, the generators may be removed and replaced with batteries. 
The current hybrid system, together with the removal of the requirement for the vessel to turn around in port, is estimated to cut fuel requirements by 40%, maybe even more. Obviously, P&O will have hard data after the ship's entry into service. Tom also talks us through the safety features such as the firefighting system, which is an ultra-fog system controlling fires with a dense, water-based mist that can easily contain even an EV fire on the deck until the ship reaches port, as there is no requirement for carbon dioxide which might run out. Back up to deck 9, and now we've seen the pet lounge, let's take a look at the accommodation for commercial drivers. First, we see the servery and eating area. There are also plenty of hot showers available, with a screen in the lounge showing each cubicle's availability. Away from the eating area is the commercial driver's lounge, offering a range of seating from club to recliner to lounger and even five couchettes. Commercial drivers also have a spacious and exclusive outside area. Back in the passenger area and midships on what I'm calling the south side of Deck 9 is Kitchen, a fast food joint with another bright and airy seating area. Kitchen offers fish and chips, chicken nuggets, and beef, chicken and plant-based burgers. It's all self-service and your number will be displayed when your order is ready to collect. There are also screens in the eating area to save you having to hang around the servery once your order is in. Opposite the kitchen, on the north side of Deck 9 are the quiet lounges, havens of calm where you can catch a snooze on a recliner that's fitted with USB-A sockets and armrest tables, or simply enjoy the views without the sun in your eyes. And finally, at the Dover end of Deck 9 is the club lounge. Like the commercial driver's facility, this is split into two zones, eating and lounging. And like the driver's lounge, there is a superb outdoor space. Given the location of the duty-free shop, this is the only interior lounge that faces the White Cliffs of Dover. The club lounge supplement is £24 and that includes hot and cold food and drinks, including alcoholic drinks. So there you have it a tour of the pioneering P&O Pioneer. What are my personal thoughts? To start with, I love this ship. It is a quantum leap in ferry design. First and foremost, it offers a smooth and silent, vibration-free traveling experience. It's like the difference between traveling in an old diesel bus and a new luxury EV. It's easy to leave the berth without even noticing. I also love the decor, the palette, the ambiance, and the way the ship is flooded with natural light. Even the car decks are well lit and inviting. I also like the pet lounge initiative and the quiet lounge, 
not forgetting the plethora of universal mains sockets and USB sockets at almost every seat. But what do I not like? Well, the only thing I don't like about the design of the ship is the location of the duty-free shop at the Dover end of Deck 8. This denies non-club class passengers iconic views of the White Cliffs of Dover from inside the ship. Maybe this was a commercial move by P&O to encourage club class uptake. Either way, I feel that the ship would just be nicer if the lounge bar and the duty-free shop swapped places. The other reservations I have are nothing to do with the ship itself. I am not a fan of P&O's grab-and-go food offering, as one of the reasons I like taking a ferry is to sit down with a proper meal. Another reservation I have is that while P&O's sister ship Liberté will be joining the fleet in the autumn, P&O currently has no plans to refurbish the older Spirit class ships that will continue to serve the Dover Calais route. This will lead to inconsistency of the customer experience between different vessels. At least P&O does publish which ship serves which sailing in its timetable, so at least you can choose your crossing to make sure you travel on board the Pioneer. I certainly would. Please remember that this video was made before the ship's entry into commercial service and while the facts given in this video are believed to be correct, errors or omissions might arise. If this transpires to be the case, I will update the description below this video, so do please check that out. I hope you found that interesting. If you did, I would be hugely grateful if you would share this video with your friends online, through social media or through your favourite forum. I'd like to say a massive thank you to P&O Ferries for giving us the opportunity to be the only YouTube channel to be invited along to this exclusive preview of this amazing and innovative ferry. I hope you enjoyed this video folks, if you did please give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you don't already and it just leaves me to say from Dougal, from Ted and from me, thanks for tuning in. There. What did you reckon boys? You stayed with mum with your friends. You had a lovely day, although despite that, they never smile. Oh, you could be a bit more cheerful. Look, what about if I take you later on dog lounge? Yes, would you like to travel in the dog lounge? Yes, would that suit sir? Yes, no? Uh, no, I think he wants me to charter the whole ship for him. No, it's never gonna happen, Do Sorry. Watching.